This is VOA News. Via remote, I'm Marissa Melton. British Prime Minister Liz Truss resigned Thursday after just 44 days in office. She, her departure was prompted by an economic plan that uh, sent financial markets into a tailspin, led to shakeups in her cabinet, and divided her ruling Conservative Party. She's the shortest-serving prime minister in British history. In comments delivered at a podium in front of the prime minister's residence in London, Truss said she recognized that she could not deliver the mandate on which she was elected by the Conservative Party. Truss said she'll serve until a replacement is selected. Party officer Graham Brady told reporters the Conservatives could possibly have a new prime minister in place by October 31st. Moscow says it will intensify attacks against Ukrainian targets. AP correspondent Charles de Ledesma has more. Russia's declared its intention to increase its targeting of Ukraine's power, water and other vital infrastructure in its latest phase of the nearly eight-month-old war, while Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky says Moscow's forces have destroyed around 30% of the country's power stations since October 10. But Ukrainians are vowing to stand firm despite the attacks that threaten cuts in electricity, water and heat, and they've stockpiled flashlights, candles and and firewood and they have plenty of blankets and warm clothing for the encroaching cold weather they say they're used to russian president vladimir putin's using energy as a weapon i'm charles de Ledesma. the top united nations official in ukraine says as winter approaches millions of people are beyond the reach of humanitarian aid in non-government controlled areas and will likely be in need of assistance this winter this is voa news the European Union agreed Thursday to impose new sanctions on entities supplying Iranian drones to Russia that are used to strike Ukraine. The Czech presidency of the European Union announced the agreement in a tweet Thursday, saying it came after three days of talks with EU ambassadors and would go into effect Thursday afternoon. It said the EU is freezing assets of three individuals and one entity responsible for drone deliveries. It added that the EU is also prepared to extend sanctions against four Iranian entities that were previously sanctioned. Russian forces have intensified their use of airstrikes during the past week uh, that Ukrainian officials have identified as utilizing Iranian-made drones laden with explosives that are crashed into their targets. Iran has denied supplying the drones to Russia. Russia has denied using them in Ukraine. Senior officials from the United States, Japan and South Korea will meet next week in Tokyo amid escalating threats from North Korea. While the U.S. reaffirms its ironclad commitment to its allies, the State Department has declined to say whether Washington would consider the redeployment of tactical nuclear, nuclear weapons to the Korean Peninsula and whether South Korea has made such a request. Earlier this month, Japan, the United States and South Korea held talks to condemn North Korea's October 4th firing of an intermediate-range ballistic missile over Japan that landed in the Pacific. It was the first such launch in five years and prompted Japan to evacuate some residents in the area. About 50 people were killed and nearly 300 injured in violence that broke out in Chad on Thursday as hundreds took to the streets to demand a quicker transition to democratic rule. The prime minister who gave the death toll at a news conference said the government is still compiling casualties from what he described as an armed insurrection. In the United States, a worker who quietly lowered a town's fluoride for years has resigned. AP correspondent Norman Hall has more. Uh, we're going to pass up that story uh, and give you a story about the uh, vaccines for viruses. A panel of vaccine experts says COVID-19 shots should be added to the list of recommended vaccinations for kids and adults. The panel's unanimous decision has no immediate effect. COVID-19 shots are already recommended for virtually all Americans. Rather, it would put the shots on the annually updated formal list of what vaccinations doctors should be routinely offering to their patients alongside shots for polio, measles, and hepatitis. The expert panel's decisions are almost always adopted by the CDC director and then sent...
This is VOA News. Via remote, I'm Marissa Melton. The U.S. House of Representatives panel investigating the insurrection at the U.S. Capitol building on January 6th of last year has formally issued a subpoena to former President Donald Trump. AP Washington correspondent Sagar Magani reports. It came eight days after Liz Cheney and the committee voted unanimously to summon the ex-president. We must seek the testimony under oath of January 6th Central Player. In a letter to his lawyers, the panel demands Trump testify on or around November 14th and provide documents before then. Cheney and panel chair Benny Thompson wrote they recognize a subpoena to a former president is significant and historic, and they're not doing it lightly. It's unclear how Trump will respond. Sagar Magani, Washington. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky called on the West to warn Russia not to blow up a huge dam that would flood a swath of southern Ukraine as his forces prepare to push Moscow's troops from Kherson in one of the war's most important battles. In a television address, Zelensky said Russian forces had planted explosives inside a huge dam which holds back an enormous reservoir that dominates much of southern Ukraine and were planning to blow it up to cover their retreat. Russia accused Kyiv earlier this week of planning to rocket the dam. Neither side produced evidence to back up their claims. The presidents of the European Commission and the European Council, Ursula von der Leyen and Charles Michel, reiterated their support for Ukraine Friday, pledging further financial support for the country's reconstruction after recent attacks on Kyiv and other areas. More on that at our website, voanews.com. This is VOA News. In Great Britain, Boris Johnson eyes eyes a comeback bid as Britain's Conservatives pick a new leader. AP correspondent Charles de Ledesma has more. Former Prime Minister Boris Johnson is among several British lawmakers trying to scoop up support ahead of a short, intense contest to become the country's next Prime Minister. The Conservative Party is choosing a replacement for Liz Truss, who quit on Thursday after a turbulent 45-day term. Favourites include former Treasury Chief Rishi Sunak and House of Commons leader Penny Mordaunt. The wild card is Johnson, who was forced to resign by the party just three months ago amid ethics scandals. Meanwhile, opposition leaders are calling for an early general election. Charles Tuladesma, London. Sri Lankan lawmakers have overwhelmingly approved a constitutional amendment that trims the powers of the president. It's a key demand of protesters who are seeking political reforms and solutions to the country's economic crisis. The amendment transfers some presidential powers, including the appointment of officials, to a constitutional council comprising lawmakers and respected non-politicians. The government will says, says the changes will help ensure the independence of the judiciary and public service. Eurovision Song Contest winners Ukraine's Kalush Orchestra teamed up with Finnish rock band The Rasmus for their new single In the Shadows of Ukraine, AP's Ed Donahue reports. In the Shadows was a hit for The Rasmus in 2011 and has been updated with lyrics and music from Ole Siuk's Kalush Orchestra. He says it combines several genres, hip-hop, rock, and Ukrainian folk. The group is now touring in the U.S., but Siuk says their thoughts are back at home. He says now is really not an easy time for our country. Missiles hit different cities every day, and you never know where the next one will hit. But we still believe that victory will be ours. We believe in the armed forces and in our dear Ukraine. Glory to Ukraine. The collaboration between the two groups began when they met during the Eurovision Song Contest in March. I'm Ed Donahue. U.S. health regulators Friday estimated that two new variants of coronavirus accounted for more than 16 percent of coronavirus variants in the country, nearly doubling from last week, while Europe expects them to become the dominant variants in a month. The European Center for Disease Prevention and Control said the variants BQ1 and closely related BQ1.1 are likely to drive up cases in the coming weeks to months in the European region. Via remote, I'm Marissa Milton. You're listening to VOA News.